Hello guys and welcome again. Uh, this video is going to be a continuation to the previous video about alpha blockers. So in part one, I talk about the non-selective alpha blockers. In this video, I will talk about the selective ones. So let's start. So before uh, we go into the drugs, I want to add one more idea. The alpha-1 receptors have different types. So we have the alpha-1A and alpha-1D and alpha-1B. The alpha-1A and alpha-1D are more expressed in the bladder and prostate. So more expressed in the bladder and prostate. Alpha-1B is more expressed in the blood vessels. Yeah, so uh, this will help us to understand some of the drugs that I'm going to explain in this video. Uh, so now let's talk about prazosine, doxazacine, and tirazosine. Those drugs are all competitive, meaning they compete with the agonist, which is the norepinephrine, to block the alpha-1 receptors. Because they are selective for alpha-1 receptors, they, are, they have selective alpha-1 antagonism. And because of that, we have less tachycardia that happen with these drugs. So, so in the previous video, uh, I explained the tachycardia. It happens with uh, by two mechanisms in the non-selective alpha blockers. So we have the pararefrax tachycardia, and we have the antagonism of alpha two receptors, which give us an increase in the norepinephrine going to the heart. So we will get tachycardia. Because of these drugs are more selective to the alpha one, this mechanism would be absent. So we'd only have the pararefrax uh, tachycardia uh, and uh, this would give us less tachycardia compared to the non-selective alpha blockers. Uh, another idea or fact about these drugs is that they are used in, a, in the treatment of hypertension because they relax the arterial and venous vascular smooth muscles. Because the, the, as we know, arterial and venous uh, vessels uh, walls have alpha receptors, alpha 1 receptors. So because they are selective antagonists for these alpha receptors, we would get uh, a decrease in the blood pressure and that would be beneficial for treatment of hypertension. Uh, another fact is that they are used in the treatment of benign prostatic hyper hyperplasia because they relax the prostate smooth muscles. So uh, because of the prostate having uh, alpha-1 receptors, uh, when they are blocked, they would give us a relaxation in the smooth muscle muscles of prostate and they would improve the the urine flow improve urine flow in people who have benign prostatic hyperplasia so that's why they are used for treatment of that condition and we would get we might get hypotension as an adverse effect in these people uh, because those uh, those uh, uh, type of drugs would give us a decrease in the blood pressure, so we would get, so we might get hypotension as an adverse effect uh, in these people with benign prostatic hyperplasia treated with these drugs. Uh, those drugs may inhibit ejaculation. Uh, so we have alpha receptors, alpha one receptors present in the. Uh, vas deferens 
and some of them are present in the vas deferens. So when we block those receptors, we might get some of the vas deferens to relax and we would inhibit the ejaculation. Uh, the half-life of these drugs uh, present would be 3 hours, tirazosine is 9 to 12 hours, and doxazosine would have the most or the longest half-life, which is about 22 hours. Now, let's talk about tamzilucin. So tamzilucin is a competitive, meaning it competes with the agonist, which is the norepinephrine, to block the alpha-1 receptors. And it is selective, same as the previous drugs. Uh, so it would have little effect on the alpha-2 receptors. And this drug has higher affinity for alpha-1A and alpha-1D. And those are more expressed in the bladder and prostate. More expressed in bladder and prostate. So that's why this drug would have more effect on prostatic smooth muscles and it has less effect on the blood pressure because the blood pressure is related to the alpha 1b. And because it has more effect on the prostatic smooth muscles, this, this is used in penine prostatic hyperplasia. To improve uh, hyperplasia, to improve urine flow because it relaxes the prostatic smooth muscles and we would have improved urine flow in, the, in this uh, people, but it would have less adverse effects because it would have less effect on blood pressure compared to the prazosine, tirazosine, doxazosine. And it also may inhibit ejaculation by the same mechanism because we have alpha receptors in the vas and when we in inhibit those we might get relaxation of the vas and we might have in ejaculation inhibition. And the half-life is from 9 to 15 hours for this agent. Finally, let's talk about yohimbine. Yohimbine is competitive, selective alpha-2 antagonist, so it would have less effect on the alpha-1 and more effect on the alpha-2, and it is used in the treatment of orthostatic hypotension because it, have, it would increase the blood pressure, and it's also used to reverse the antihypertensive action of clonidine. So clonidine is an alpha-2 agonist. So it would decrease the norepinephrine and it would give us a decrease in the blood pressure. And yohembine is an alpha-2 antagonist. So it would have the reverse effect of the clonidine and it is used when the clonidine, when we have severe hypotension due to clonidine. So this drug would reverse the antihypertensive action of clonidine. Yeah, and that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next video.